Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Smith's Kitchen. Brian, Mr. Smith, Kitchen, as always. And I am so glad you stopped by. Um, I was just getting ready to do some canning, um, like we do on Saturdays. And today, we're going to do uh, beef tacos. Um, the meat for a beef taco. And this is um, a little different than some of the stuff we've done in the past because today we're gonna cold pack everything. And you're like, cold pack? So when we did like the uh, chicken isle king and the uh, beef and mushrooms and broth uh, for beef and mushroom gravy, we we cooked up the meat first and, you know, and, and heated up, you know, some of our vegetables and stuff like that. Today we're not heating up a thing. Um, the most time consuming part of this, other than the actual pressure canning, is going to be the uh, time it takes to prep. And if you meal prep, which was one of my uh, one of the questions I asked here recently on uh, the chat piece here on YouTube, um, was do you meal prep, you know, and plan? And if you meal prep, this could be something you could prep and it doesn't take any time. Now, it does take quite a bit of uh, stuff, so to speak, but you have options, which is kind of nice. And um, there was something else that I don't remember now. Anyhow, uh, if you're new to my channel, that happens quite frequently, but and this is your first video, I hope you get something out of this video. I hope you check out some of mine. We do canning, we cook, we bake. Um, here shortly we'll have a video or two of the garden um, to keep track of its process through the summer um, until it's time to process that stuff up and make meals out of the stuff we pull from the garden. Um, if you're returning or one of our new subscribers, welcome back and thank you for both, um, for coming back. That uh, means I did something right somewhere. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. That's really important. Uh, it gets us out in the algorithm. As you know, our end goal um, for our channel here is uh, 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And we're at a crawl right now, but we're still gaining new people to our neighborhood, and that's awesome. Um, I, I'll never hate on that at all. And you know, and either way it goes, that's all right. Um, comments, comments are always welcome. I answer 99.5% of all comments. Um, the only way I don't if there's, is if there's something wrong with YouTube um, or I'm not breathing, uh, basically. Uh, that's the only times I don't respond in some way, shape or form. Um, I feel that's important. You take the time to comment, I should take the time to respond, right? Um, yeah, just be nice, be civil. Um, think before you type. It's okay to disagree just be polite about it um, that's all I ask uh, we have a lot of different age groups you know in our neighborhood we have a lot of different backgrounds so to speak and we all play really well together all 3,500 and change of us and I'd like to keep that that way um, I feel that's important and having a good neighborhood especially around food so anyhow uh, let's head on down to the counter. I will give you your measurements in the tablespoons, teaspoons, pounds, but I'll also do, uh, I'll do kilograms and uh, grams for those that uh, uh, use that system. Um, so anyhow, let's head on down to the counter and get started. Okay, we are down here at the counter. Uh, some things you will need uh, as far as things go. You will need a pressure canner. We are pressure canning. Um, anything that involves raw packing, um, you'll want to, uh, you, you'll have to pressure can. Now, pressure canning does open up a world of possibilities because um, you don't have to pay a whole lot of attention to the acidity levels in the product you're canning. Where water bath canning you do, like with jams and jellies, pie, uh, pie fillings, we add lemon juice to, to make sure it's acidic enough to sit on a shelf. Now, with pressure canning, you don't have to do that so much because we're bringing it up to 240 degrees inside that canner, and that will kill everything, pretty much. Um, I think, uh, yeah, all bacteria is dead at 190 degrees. So botulism, done deal at 190 degrees. Um, that's why we're up to 240 and we maintain that, and it'll kill any bacteria that might be in the jars, along with not, you know, <clears throat> where it seals won't let any in so anyhow you will need a pressure canner you will need a pot to put three quarts of beef broth in now if you have beef broth handy great if you don't i use better than bouillon um which is like bouillon cubes only it's in a, a kind of a liquid form 
um, a paste form, or you can use bouillon cubes, um, or you could just use water if you don't have any of that, because um, the, the meat will make its own juice, so you'll have that beef flavor. Um, but I've got three quarts of beef broth sitting there. You will need a bowl, the biggest bowl you can muster, um, because we're gonna dump everything into this bowl and then stir it up by hand. So the first things that we need to do is grab the recipe, recipe, and this recipe will make about six quarts. Um, now you can also do pints, and it would give you 12 pints in that case, the smaller jars. Um, and you wanna make sure your jars are suitable for pressure canning. There are two different kinds of jars as we discussed in one of the other videos. Um, it'll have writing all over it, measurements on the sides and things like that. That way you know you get the right ones. Um, but the original recipe um, allowed you to do as little as two quarts or four pints. Um, that way, because you have to have a minimum, when you're pressure canning, you want a minimum of two quarts or four pints in your canner or things can go wrong. Um, you may not get the right temperature. You may not, you know, they might roll over and break. So at least two, but we're gonna do six. So I tripled the recipe. First things we're gonna put into this bowl. We are going to put uh, six teaspoons, 24 grams of kosher salt. Put that in there, followed by six teaspoons, uh, three grams of oregano. Now, you can use plain old regular Italian oregano. I use Mexican oregano, um, which you can find at most grocery stores. Uh, it, yeah, most grocery stores. Um, is where I get it at here. I actually buy mine at GFS uh, in a bigger container. Um, and then here's where the prep work begins. We are gonna need uh, two cups, 150 grams of fresh cilantro, and we want it chopped right there. And that's about three and a half bundles of cilantro from the grocery store. Get that in there. And then we are gonna wanna put in uh, 24 cloves of garlic. Now the original recipe called for it to be uh, sliced up, diced up. I just minced mine up with a press. Um, but it's 24 cloves and I forgot to uh, weigh it out so I will let you know what it weighs right here. Um, yeah, and that way you'll know um, what its gram weight is. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. And let me find my spatula. Yeah, this is gonna work. Get the rest of that garlic out of there. And then, I mean, this is literally just a dump and go thing. It's like the quickest thing ever. Uh, we got our garlic in there. Now, here is, uh, I'm putting it in, but this is something that you can switch out another pepper for. I have six whole chipotle peppers. Now, if you don't know what a chipotle pepper is, it's a jalapeno that has been fire roasted. Um, and that's why how it gets this brown color. My chipotle peppers are an adobe so adobo sauce. Um, you can buy that at the grocery store. Uh, it comes in a little red can here, I'll show you. Looks just like that. Yeah, or something similar to that, but it'll say chipotles and adobo sauce. And I need ugh, a towel. So we'll get that in there. And I got those chopped up. Yeah, because ultimately, we're gonna mix this all up so that way we got some evenness to it. And then here's the part that might make you cry. I mean, literally, not figuratively. Um, I have six, um, 600 grams, which is six medium onions or three large onions. Might I recommend the three large onions. And I've just got them sliced up, right? Fairly thin slices, nothing major. We're gonna put that in there. And over there, yep. Okay, so now that we've got that in there, I'll go ahead and take my spoon. We're just gonna give this a quick mix, break everything up, form a happy family. All right, there we are, all mixed up. So the last thing we need to put in here is going to be our meat. Now, I've got about six pounds worth of chuck roast. Um, so you could also use round 
Um, round steak, you could use beef brisket. Um, but here's how I determine what goes into most of my uh, cube beef, beef canning recipes. Um, what can I find on manager special? I actually found one giant roast and one uh, good size roast. It was like a four pound roast, almost four pound, and almost uh, almost three pound roast um, on manager special at the grocery store. So I bought them both up, voila, right there. And it, and it cost me as much. Even if I wasn't making this, I would have still bought them to throw in the deep freeze. Um, that way we could uh, use them up later on, uh, you know, when we need them. But I've um, got those on manager special. It's about six pounds worth. And even if you just buy little things here and there that are either on sale or manager special, remember an extra $10 every time you go to the grocery store, you know that once a week, once every two weeks, go to the grocery store, adds up pretty quick in the pantry. Um, but we're going to take that and we're going to put that in here. And then, and, I mean, if there's any uh, juice in there or whatever, and it's cold, it's raw, I cut it into you know, about one and a half, two inch chunks. Yeah, you know, is all we you know, had to do. Um, but you want to chunk it up. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna mix it all up. Now, if you have a heavy duty spoon or something like that you wanna use, absolutely. But I just prefer to use my hands. I can put gloves on and run at it. Um, you'll want to, the reason why we can do this in raw pack or cold pack uh, versus having to cook the meat is it's not like hamburger, right? When you use ground products, that's very dense and so it would just sit in a lump in your canning jar and you would run into uh, it potentially not heating up in the center okay so we are mixed up and <laughs> very confused um, and ready to go and that's it I mean that's all it takes to put everything together that goes in there we've got our our uh, protein mixed in with our vegetables and spices. We've got our beef broth warmed up, not boiling, but warmed up. And we've got our pressure canner filled to the proper water level, which is uh, about two and a half quarts of water. And I've got it turned on low so that way it's warming up. And so now all I have to do is clean this disaster up, get our jars out, and we can start packing it up. Hold on for me one second. Okay, so I got our six jars out. And here's what I was talking about earlier. See how it's got something on all four sides? That's how I know it's for pressure canning. Um, if it wasn't, it would look more like, oh, maybe, 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 this one here who doesn't say anything on it. Um, that's water bathing. Um, that way, that's how you know the difference. Now, let's go over real quick the rules to um, lids, rings, and jars. Jars, you used to have to sanitize them. You don't anymore. Wash them, whether they're you know, brand new or uh, you've used them a, a million times. You still wanna wash them before you put them back into rotation and then let them air dry. And then we're going, I just keep mine in a thing of hot water about 130 degrees here in the sink. That way I know they stay warm to match the warmth of everything else, right? Lids. Uh, the USDA says you don't have to sterilize these anymore um, because of the type of glue that's used on modern day lids there's no need to warm it up so wash rinse dry rings wash rinse dried you don't have to heat those either um, the only time you have to sanitize anything like your lids or your rings keep them hot is if you are going to process something under 10 minutes now that very rarely does that ever ever happen it does happen i've done stuff that's been like seven minutes but for the most part everything is over 10 minutes easily so now that we're done with the lecture all we're going to do now is we're going to take our meat and unlike when we hot pack remember when we did the mushroom and beef and the uh the chicken a la king we we're following a rule of 50% solid, 50% liquid. That does not apply to raw pack. Um, matter of fact, raw pack, yeah, you can see, 
um, we're going to fill this all the way up to the inch line and it's okay to you know push it down a little bit don't cram it in um, don't mash it um, you want to just be able to just you know push it down a little bit to make a little bit of room but you, if you cram it in then it becomes too dense um, but we're going to take all these up to one inch of headspace with our uh, protein and vegetables. Okay, so we've got our jars packed. I'll end up getting five by the time I squished them down. And there we are. And I know I did, if you're new and I didn't say, the one inch line, they make, you can use a ruler if need be because it's not always one inch for everything. Um, or they make a tool. But this is the one inch line, this ring right here that's on pretty much every jar known to man. Um, is the one inch line <clears throat> you don't want it to go above that now the reason why we got five instead of six and is because well there could be many reasons um, more than likely it's because of the amount of fat I cut off the meat um, just because I started with seven ish pounds of meat doesn't mean you're gonna end up with that because you're gonna trim all the big chunks of fat off of your roast or if, if there is big chunks of fat you want that gone um, that way you don't fuss with it so the next thing we're going to do after we've got our jars packed is we're going to go ahead and ladle our broth into our jars I grab the bigger of the two no nah. wow. we'll go ahead and ladle our broth into the jars up to that one inch space you know, and then after we do that, here, let me get this one over here. That way I can show you and you can see it and I'm not blocking the view of the world with more jars. So we'll go ahead and get our broth in there like such to the one inch spot up to that ring. And then after I fill it up and move my funnel, I'm gonna go ahead and in this case take a chopstick because I can't have nice things because I have kids um, and they like to make my stuff disappear. Now, I, even though I say I have kids, it's one child in particular and her name is Abby. Um, loves to take my stuff, but we're going to go ahead and get uh, the air bubbles out, right? We're going to debubble. Um, and that same tool I was talking about they make to measure your depth um, is the exact same tool you'll use to air bubble and the air debubble your can your jars and then we'll just go ahead because we lost a little bit of broth there um, getting the air pockets out we'll just top it back up to that one inch and then I'm gonna do the same with these other three I have left okay so we've got them all filled debubbled refilled topped off um, now all we have left to do is a couple things uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this paper towel I'm going to dip it in a small jar of vinegar and I'm going to go around the top. Um, so we've got our lids wiped or our jars wiped off the rims so that way there's nothing on there to get in between the lid and the <clears throat> jar and then we'll take our lids set them on here and then we'll take our rings and we'll get them on and then when you're putting your rings on remember you want to put them on so they're finger tight not death grip it with your palm now I get it because I run into the same problem sometimes your hands aren't strong um, I know with the arthritis in my hands sometimes they just don't really want to work well um, so I mean it's okay to put your hand you just don't want to death grip it right so finger tight on all of these okay so we got our all our lids on finger tight next thing we're gonna do is take the lid off of our warming pressure canner yeah, no matter anytime you take the lid off of anything hot, you want to make sure you lift it away from you, not towards you. Towards you, because see all that steam coming off of there? If I had lifted that up towards me, that steam would have gone right in my face, and, and you can get burnt doing that. So we're going to go ahead and get our jars in here. And then that sixth jar I had ready, I'm going to go ahead and put it in here too. That way, and I'll fill up full of water here right quick. That way we have less room in here and things won't jiggle and potentially break. So we'll go ahead and get that in there, just like that. Then whatever vinegar you have left in your jar, 
Let's go ahead and put it in there. Um, what that vinegar does is, I mean, people who have been camping for a while know, um, it keeps your jars from getting stuff on them. Like a lot of times, uh, especially if you have a well, sometimes uh, city water will do the same thing. The minerals will collect onto that glass and it can cloud up your glass, make them look yucky, but what it'll do long term is etch the glass, scratch it, and weaken it. So the vinegar, even though it's not, nobody will tell you to put vinegar in your water uh, officially, it's good. Um, it keeps your glass from getting etched. All right, so let me uh, bring this up a little bit so I don't have to keep bending over now that we're not so much on the counter anymore. All right, so we got our jars are in there, our water's warmed. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get our lid on there. Now with the Presto canners, you just uh, arrow, arrow, and then tighten. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn this bad boy up to high. We're gonna let this go until this little button pops up, right? Like we do with all the other times. Once that button pops up, I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and set it now. But I'm gonna let my timer go for 10 minutes. As soon as that 10 minutes is up, I will put my weight on here. Well, I'll show you when I come back. All right, I'll see you here in a second. Okay, so our timer's going off. <clears throat> You're gonna start that. Button popped up right there. <clears throat> Set my timer, started it for 10 minutes. Now that it's gone off, I know I've gotten enough air out of my pressure canner. I'm gonna take my weighted gauge. I'm gonna put it over the top of it, just like that. Be careful when doing that. That steam is hot, it's steam. Now, as my gauge goes up and heads towards 11, if you're under 1,000 feet uh, sea level, you want 11 PSI. It's 10 PSI if you're using a weighted gauge versus a gauge in a weight. And once it hits 11, or as it goes up, I am going to steadily turn my heat down. And in my case, I'm gonna take it down to about two and a half, three, as far as the numbers go on my dial, and that'll hold it at 11. Once it hits 11, I will start my timer. My timer is gonna be set for 90 minutes because I'm doing quarts. If you're doing pints, it'll be 75 minutes. Now, if uh, at any time it drops below uh, your recommended PSI, which in this case will be 11, um, you have to start your timer over, unfortunately. Now, that being said, I have before gone down to like 10 and a half and I'm near the end um, of my time. Just turned it up a hair and got it back over 11. It did not start all the way over again. I also do not leave the kitchen. This is something that you, you really don't want to go away from. I mean, if you gotta use the bathroom or something like that, I mean, go. But I, I wouldn't go too far. It does have things that'll let you know when things are in trouble. Like in this case, if it gets above, you know, 15, this will start jiggling and you'll hear it. But I've seen pressure canners that will be holding steady at 11 in this case and 35 minutes into it, all of a sudden it either drops or goes skyrocketed, skyrocketing up. You want to be around for that. As this goes up, like right now we're almost at five, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down from high to about seven. You know, I'll drop it a little bit as this goes up a little bit till I reach 11 and have it where I know it'll stay at 11 heat wise. All right, well, I'm going to let this uh, get up to 11, start my timer, let it go for 90 minutes, and when I come back, we'll uh, talk about the next steps. See you here in a second. Okay, so we're at the next day, and I know you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, just a millisecond ago, we were just starting the pressure canning. And you're right, um, I ran into all kinds of technical difficulties. Long story short, I shut the heat off at 90 minutes and went to eat dinner because I cooked dinner while it was cooking or while it was processing. And next thing I fell asleep, I woke up in a hurry um, because I 
it hit me, oh my gosh, I didn't want to go to sleep, and the stuff was in the canner, and but it was off. Um, but you still don't want to leave it in the canner. And I ran out here, and the uh, pin had dropped, and I had to get, uh, get the stuff out. And then all of a sudden, um, I go to pick up the last jar, and um, it was broke. But anyhow, that's all right. Um, it's the next day, and we're going to talk about, um, I'll review real quick what you're looking for. Um, so let's uh, look at this canner real quick. Let me get the weight back out. Gosh, that was loud. I'm sorry. So looking at this canner, let me bring you more towards the canner there. There we are. All right, so where you left off, we were at 11 PSI. This pin was up. Things going, 90 minutes goes by, we turn our heat off, right? When the heat turns off and the pressure drops to zero, never go by the gauge. You know, or even if you're a weighted gauge, don't go by it either. Because um, both canners have a pin. That pin will drop. That's how you'll know you are good to go. Once that pin drops, you can remove this. Don't take the lid off yet. Let it sit for five minutes, okay? That way things can calm down. Once that five minutes is up, then you can take your lid off, but you're gonna take it off away from you, right? There's still steam in there. Uh, and then we can take our jars out. That is what you missed. So like I said, when I took the jars out, we uh, I, I get four of them out, I get the empty one out, and I gotta take the last one out. And when I lifted the last one, um, like I said, it was broken. I have never had a jar break before. In all the years I've been canning, never had a jar break before, which is crazy. So anyhow, we are at the next day in the morning and our taco beef has sat for um, almost 24 hours. And this is how we turned out. Right there. I. It looks delicious. Um, so what we want to do next is we're going to go ahead, and I haven't done any of this yet, so we'll do it together, is we're going to take our rings off, and then we're automatically just going to grab that lid, lift it up, make sure that it'll hold. That tells me it's sealed. Okay, now that we've lifted all our jars, and we know they're all sealed, and we're good to go. Now we're gonna take our, our our Sharpie and we're just simply gonna write on here what they are. So it's beef tacos. And yesterday's day was 419. Okay, we've got them all labeled and dated. 419 beef tacos. And so all we have to do now is store these. Um, and as always, you know, you'll want to keep them in a cool, cooler, uh, dry, dark um, area of the house is ideal. Uh, 68 to 72 degrees um, is ideal for a place to store these to maximize their shelf life. Um, now, there's no guarantee that that'll work. There's never a guarantee in canning. But uh, as far as cooking these go, you'll want to separate the beef broth from the, the, the meat, warm up the meat, yeah, put your meat into a pan and then take a quarter cup, quarter to a half a cup of the beef, of the beef broth and pour it over top of that and then warm it back up and skillet. Um, that way you uh, get the juices flowing back in it and beef tacos are traditionally a little wet. Um, they're not like hamburger. So, and then you can add whatever toppings you like to that. Um, taste it while it's there. Make sure it's to your liking and you know, you don't have to add anything. Like sometimes I have to, when I do stuff like this, I have to add a little salt, you know, or I may want to add a little more of a spice here or there just to give that extra boost. Um, Cause no matter how hard we try, when we mix that together to get it all even, it may not all come out even. It generally is close, but that's the time you want to check for taste. 
Um, and that's it. But that, I mean, really, that's it. You'll you'll grab your taco shells, um, soft, uh, you, soft taco shells, uh, corn or flour, doesn't matter which, and go. It, really, this right here, this will feed me, Chris, and Abby, and maybe one other person. You know, because a half a cup is a serving, and there is two cups worth in here. So, yeah, and even if you have to make two, that's okay. We just ended up getting, you know, three meals, four meals out of a couple hours worth of work. It would have been six meals, but um, unfortunately, <laughs> we lost one. That's all right. Um, let me know if you try this, you know, for sure. I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I, I the, these things are so easy to make. We didn't, you all we had to do is prep some stuff up, process it, and we're done. Let it sit for 12, 24 hours. And I, they're full of flavor. I, every meal, prep meal I've done like this has always been tons of flavor and very little work afterwards. So let me know if you do try these. I, I think you'll be impressed. Um, you can either leave me a comment down below or jump over to Facebook, either way. Uh, yeah. So I don't know what we're doing next week as far as dinner goes. Um, and dessert, I think we're, I'm leaning towards a banana cake, but who knows? Um, that could change it to women a hat. Uh, canning next week, I, I want to continue with doing some meal prep stuff um, just because they're so convenient and they're so easy. You, you get the ability to you know have a meal on the shelf for those days when you come home, you just don't feel like doing anything. Or if you do a lot of you know camping or RVing, things of that nature, they, they don't take up a lot of shelf space. So it saves you some space, some room, some time, um, and gives you a good hearty meal. There's just so many things that can be done with these dishes. But until next week for dinner, I love you. I love you very much. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Tell somebody else that you love them and love them very much. They may need to hear it. It's going to make them smile either way. It's going to make you smile and feel good to tell them. And if you take them over a, a, some of those beef tacos or make them some, I guarantee to put a smile on their face. Yeah, I guarantee it. And I mean, why not take them over a jar and share some of the joy and love? So until Wednesday for dinner, I love you. I'll see you then. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.